What's up guys, welcome back to the channel for another video. This time we're doing a review of the Uperfect Uplace C2 120 hertz gaming monitor. This is normally a $270 monitor. I do see it on sale from time to time for $190. And if you use the affiliate link and promo code GCPlanet20, that's GCPlanet20, you can get $20 off additionally for a $150 purchase or more. So we're gonna take a look at the Legion Go, Steam Deck, and ROG Ally all running on this monitor, plus all of its own features here. So let's get into it, starting with what's in the box. And I won't spend too, too long here, but I do wanna go over this for those of you interested. Portable monitor for your Switch, Xbox, PS5, or for me, the Steam Deck Ally and Legion Go, though I did test the consoles on here as well, and they work fantastic. But let's concentrate on our handhelds and get into the box here. We've got our user's manual, which is pretty typical for these types of monitors in here. And there's also a more extensive online user's manual as well. We have a power adapter that comes here because with some devices, you will need to plug this in and power it. However, some devices will just straight up power it on their own, making it an even more portable option. You get two USB-C to USB-C cables in here, which is nice for the two ports and the mini HDMI to regular HDMI for your consoles and other devices there as well. So pretty good for in the box, giving you everything you need to get started, including of course our actual monitor, which is very nice and lightweight. It's similar to other uh, 15 uh, inch or so 1080p monitors I've tested with a similar foldable magnetic cover on here and that type of thing. But we'll take a closer uh, look as we get into it. But I do like the minimalistic design and the way this is set up. Again, similar to other uh, portable monitors I've checked out. But here's all your ports on the uh, left side here. Uh, if we flip this over onto the right side, we got our headphone jack, our menu button, and our power button there. On the back, we've got our best amount spots here that we can uh, use if we want. And then labeling for our buttons on the back, not the most convenient to have those on the back, but if you wanna keep it a minimalistic design from the side and front with no writing, I guess it makes sense there. Now getting a little farther into the specs, 120 Hertz, 16 inch, 1600 piece, 1610, IPS, 400 nit screen here, 100% sRGB, three to five millisecond latency, 12 watt power, ABS material, no touch screen, HDR, yes, it says no free sync in the menu. It says it does have free sync, but I couldn't get it to activate on anything, so maybe it doesn't. However, I didn't notice any screen tearing or issues during any of my testing with games here. Of course, your best mounting here, built-in speakers, and about 1.59 on pounds. It's very lightweight and nice to, to move around, easy to carry. Now, as far as that cover it comes with, very similar to other covers you might have seen on other monitors like this, standard magnetic on the back, and you can put it into two different slots here for different angles. It's not the best, but it does basically work. Uh, something I forgot to show here is if you're on the back slot, you can actually fold the front flap forward, and it kind of helps hold that lock it in uh, a little bit better if you want to do that so that is kind of cool it works these are never my favorite kind of covers but they get the job done and it's similar here with the uperfect uh, c2 here all right so let's get into it more here the sound not a lot to talk about here you'll probably want to use headphones or the speakers on your handheld but you can take a listen here But yeah, there's not a lot to write home about when it comes to the sound, but it does have the two speakers. So you do have audio, which is nice. But again, I think headphones are just using the speakers on your handheld might be a better way to go there. All right, so as we get into it here, the UI. So you press the little button on the right, uh, and it also has a toggle switch on it. That'll get you through your brightness, black levels, contrast, all that kind of stuff. Uh, here, you can also change your aspect ratio, 16.9, 16.10, 4.3, 10, and auto that you can cycle through here if you want to manually do those, though auto has always picked up everything uh, nice for me. You can manually go through and adjust your color temps. There's also presets in here for you. Pretty basic, but all the kind of things that you want into your portable monitor here to kind of tweak the appearance a little bit how you want it. HDR mode on or off, it does have HDR, which we'll talk more about a little later in the video. Um, and then your last settings here for your signal source, free sync, which I said is in here that I can turn on and off, but not so sure the monitor itself is actually uh, working that way. Now, as far as the screen itself and the display, it's quite gorgeous. A 1600p, very colorful viewing angles, uh, as you'll see here, are really, really good, as you would expect on an IPS panel like this. But the, it maintains its color and clarity really well, pretty much no matter what angle I'm looking at it from, especially if I don't have all of my studio lights on. But yeah, the screen is crisp, colorful, and in all the games I tried it on, it looked great. Uh, 120 FPS, which is nice. So 
running games at up to 120 FPS stay looking fantastic on the screen. Again, couldn't confirm anything really yet about the uh, the VRR but uh, or the FreeSync, but I never really experienced uh, tearing or issues, uh, no ghosting either uh, on this monitor. So it's response time for the IPS must actually be pretty on because I am pretty sensitive to ghosting and blurring and smudging that can happen, which I really didn't see on this display. Now, let's go ahead and talk a little bit about that uh, VRR again. Again, like I said, it's in the UI menu. Um, I'm going to get some confirmation on this, uh, but I couldn't enable it on the Steam Deck, whether I used an HDMI and a dock or the USB-C and on the Legion Go and whatnot. Couldn't really confirm it either, even though the settings itself. So I wouldn't count on the VRR, though. Never experienced any issues, again, with tearing, smudging, ghosting, whatever, uh, with the actual display itself. Everything stayed smooth and crisp, though. It is what it is. I'm still kind of looking into this one, but I just want to mention it here in the video as I am still working on some confirmation. It can get a little confusing with all these different models, uh, what is and isn't there. Now, the HDR, I just don't recommend HDR on monitors that don't go a thousand nits or more. At a 400 nit here, HDR is activated here in Spider-Man, but it's quite dim, especially here in person. My camera's actually making it look a little brighter than it is which really gives it trouble bringing out the contrast and the colors and everything that you want from the high dynamic range. So um, yeah, for monitors like this, I just personally always recommend staying away from HDR. That's my own personal opinion on it, but it does have the functionality there if you want it. But of course for me, once I go ahead and turn HDR off, this is where the display really shines the brightness, the colors, uh, and how nice it is to game on for me here. So SDR all the way though. HDR is certainly an option. All right, time to move on to the devices, starting with the Steam Deck. And this is actually a great monitor for the Steam Deck, especially matching its aspect ratio, the 1610 and all that. It's a little bit more to go through and change, uh, but not a whole lot when it comes to the Steam Deck display. And it did default to 1600p60 when I originally docked it and plugged it in here. Uh, and you can go in and manually change that. So if I jump into something like Sonic here, it'll be 1280-800 by 60 FPS because it did default to that 1600p60. But it is pretty easy to go in and make this change with the Steam Deck. So we'll go ahead and go into the actual Steam Deck settings and we'll go down into uh, settings here and then into display and we'll be able to take it off of its auto um, functionality here when it goes automatically set resolution. And we're going to change this and I'm going to go ahead and do 120 FPS because I did want to try Sonic at 120 FPS on here. So didn't have any problem with this being able to change over and reconnect and now run at 1600p 120 fps and i'm running the game at 800p 120 fps the problem is though the steam deck can't power the monitor when you go over the 60 fps here and even certain heavy titles at 1600p output at 60 won't either so i did have to plug in the power supply the steam deck will do lower end titles cloud gaming 800p native out without being plugged in, but to go that full 1600 P 120 wasn't able to do it. But once I plugged in, we were able to then play uh, Sonic or whatever ga other games I wanted to. Sonic was a great one to actually push almost 120 FPS with the Steam Deck here, which was really cool to see on this monitor and worked really, really well. And as far as jumping into something like Spider-Man, which is uh, I ran 800 P 60 out native instead of the 1600 120 I was just doing and then ran Spider-Man at 800 P as well here and again a great experience here no problems i didn't have to be plugged in for this one because everything was 800p even the output from the steam deck but as soon as i up that from 800p uh, and add 120 fps or any of that we start getting to where we do need to plug in in order to power the monitor which isn't something we have to do over on the other handhelds and we'll take a look at cloud gaming here as well with geforce now course uses less power uh, i was running uh, 800p 60 fps here uh, with uh, geforce now streaming call of duty and i never had to worry about plugging in here either so there's a lot of portability options if you're going somewhere without power uh, or whatever you want to do there but there are going to be times with the steam deck in this monitor that you may need to be near an outlet and get plugged in if you want the display to work but all in all looked gorgeous here with the steam deck and i really enjoyed using it for both local and cloud gaming without really any real problems other than some of the things with needing to plug in on certain settings and that type of thing now the legion go by far the device that felt the most at home with this monitor my favorite external monitor portable monitor right now to use with the legion go and part of that's because this legion go is already built with with quick access to 800p 1200p and 1600p 1610 it's just built for it just like this monitor 
So I can easily go in to the quick access menu here and switch between my 1200 or I mean my 800, my 1200, my 1600 uh, very easily, very quickly, very conveniently, 60 hertz and 120 hertz as well, very quickly and easily, no problems here. And because I have all my games already set up for these different resolutions and how they run, this meant however I ran in handheld, I could run here on the monitor without any extra work and everything worked really well. And of course, we've got those detachable controllers as well with the Legion Go and you can do all of that, which is really fun. So for me, the experience with the Legion Go and this monitor is by far out of all three devices, the best experience just because it's already purpose built around those resolutions, that aspect ratio. It seems to connect and disconnect much faster than the other devices. It works well. And at 20 watts performance mode, I never had to plug it in to run the monitor in the games, at least not yet in any of my experience. And when it comes to cloud gaming like GeForce Now, instead of being 60 FPS, I could actually run the full 1600p 120 fps in the windows app here and actually stream and play games at much higher graphic uh much higher resolution and uh and frame rates so something like call of duty i can actually get in and run the game at 1200 or 1600p and push the stream to 120 fps to the go and the game itself running 120 or above and provided a fantastic cloud gaming experience with minimal work here for uh, geforce now on this monitor so the legion go definitely in my opinion was just the best device with this monitor and my favorite so far. But let's go ahead and move over and take a look at the Ally as well. Another great handheld, great device that I love here, but I did have to do a lot of restarting and fixing and then kind of get back into it here and redock. And then once I did, things were basically working. It defaulted to 720p uh, on here once I came back and was able to plug back in. I did run at 20 watts the whole time, never had to plug the monitor in, just like Legion Go, which was nice. Um, but if you go in here and switch in Command Center, you're going to get 720, 900, and 1080p, and you can switch 60 or 120 hertz. That's great. It has that kind of convenience of the Legion Go, but only in that 16:9 aspect ratio and at those resolutions which makes sense because that's what this is built for. But if you want to take advantage of the full screen here, you'll have to go into the Win Windows display settings, switch your resolution in there to get the full screen if you want to go 1200, 800, or 1600, and then manually change to 120 as it will then default to 60. Once you do this, you're all good, but you will always have to go in and make these changes in Windows settings because if you go into Command Center and change the Hertz or the resolution, it will pop you back into 16, 9, 1080, 720, or 900. It's okay. That's the way the device is built. It's a 1080p or 16, 9 device. I totally get it, but it just makes it less convenient for a monitor like this if you're wanting to take advantage of it. But other than that, just like the Legion Go, I could play games even like Robocop where you know I'm pushing the system at only 20 watts here, and I still never had a flicker, a disconnect, or a problem. Never had to plug the monitor in to external power. So when it comes to full portability, uh, these two devices definitely offer a better experience than the Steam Deck um, when it comes to never really needing to plug the monitor in. However, I think this worked fantastic for the deck as well. All right, guys, that's going to pretty much wrap up the review for this monitor. Huge thanks to you, Perfect, for sending this over for review. I really appreciate it. It's worked great for all of the consoles I messed with, but more importantly, in the video for all the handhelds that I was testing, the Legion Go is just definitely my favorite to use with this uh, monitor right now. But honestly, all three devices, gorgeous on this monitor, a great way uh, to play your games uh, either another way at home or when you're out and about or on vacation or whatever the case may be. If you're interested in this, don't forget there's an affiliate link in the description for you if you want to go check it out. Also, use code GCPLANET20 to get $20 off your order of $150 or more. And if you like what you see here, maybe don't forget subscribe, like, all that kind of stuff, and we'll have some more videos coming out. All right, guys, thanks a lot for coming to check out the video. As always, I really appreciate it, and I'll see you in the next one.